So why on God's earth would someone be willing to sell their property at a discount of 50%, 40% of whatever the property is worth out in the open market that they could just simply take a little time, energy and effort and be able to get full market value for the property. But yet they sell to real estate investors like us every single day for a lot less money. You feel that there is an absence of value. And so therefore you don't believe that a property owner is willing to do that. And I'm going to illustrate this by sharing with you something that just happened here at the gas station. My Cadillac Escalade was running out of windshield washer fluid. I needed to get some, but you know, I'm a lazy bastard. I went through a series of steps and I, as I go through these steps, I want you to think about how this relates to your property owners because they're going through the same mental gymnastics. The little thing started going off a couple of days ago, giving me warning that I needed to change it. Same way as the sellers are starting to get signs that, you know what, I gotta get rid of this property. I gotta figure something out. And so it started giving me signs. And every day it would remind me. Every day your sellers are reminded the reason why they need to sell this property of theirs. So I started to do some research. I went on Amazon, my favorite place, and I searched to see how much would a jug of windshield washer fluid be. And uh, Amazon wanted me to pay, get this, $20 for the windshield washer fluid. And I thought for a second, I would do it. It just seems like that's a little bit much that they would want $20. I think that it could be less. I went on and I said, well, what would it cost if I just walked in somewhere? Again, as your sellers, what would it cost if I make a little bit extra effort? What would I get out of it? So I went online and I searched for advanced auto parts and I saw that they had it for $4, $5 for a jug. And I said to myself, well, $20, $5, seems like that's a bit of a gap a really big, big bit of a gap. And uh, I don't know if I'm willing to do that. That's what happens when the seller gets a really low ball offer and they're like, I don't know, that seems too low. I, I had to think about it. Did my workout and then as I was driving back home, I said, you know what, let me try again. I don't want to go to the auto parts store. So I say, let me just pass by the gas station. Let me see what they want. I go in and I look at the jugs. None of them have prices. And I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be outrageous. So I get in line at the gas station and I'm already thinking to myself, okay, what's your limit, Chico? Like if they tell you they want $30 for this jug of windshield washer fluid, I'm going to be like, oh man, that's way too much. Just way too much. And you might be thinking, Chico, what world do you live in that you think it costs $20 to buy a gallon of windshield washer fluid. I gotta sell you some more shit because you buy things at outrageous prices. What if they said they wanted $20 for this jug? $20 is Amazon, but now I'm here in line so I get it faster. I don't wanna go to Advanced Auto. I have no idea where Advanced Auto is anyway. I know where Target is, but then I have to get out of the car, I have to walk through Target, I have to do all this, and I really don't feel like doing any of that. So I said to myself, you know what, 20, I just feel so guilty. But if they, if they told me it was $15, I'd be like, you know what, screw it take my $15, open up the hood. The anchor had been set already, similar to what when you make an offer on a, a seller's property at really low price and you set that lower anchor. And they said they wanted $7. And I thought to myself, damn, that is a steal. These people don't know what the hell they're doing. I was willing to pay $15. $10, I probably would have said, screw it, just take my money. The same thing happens with the property owners. This is the same mental gymnastics that they're going through. You're having that initial conversation with them and, and you make them a really low offer and they're like, yeah, that seems too low. But in their mind, they're kind of digesting it. They're not thinking about it. Then you have another conversation with them and you say, well, what if I could do this? And they're like, oh, I don't know, maybe. And they start thinking about the property and all their problems and they don't want to suffer through the inconvenience. They just want to get it done. And then next thing you know, you give them a price that you think is outrageous, but for them in their mind, similar to you, you might think that Chico, it's outrageous that you are willing to pay $15 for a jug of, of windshield washer fluid. But it's the same way you're thinking, oh, the seller, they would never take that price. But yet they take that price and they say, you know what? Screw it. Let's just get it done. I want this thing over with. And lo and behold, you get a deal. That's the mindset. Price is only an issue in the absence of value. And that's something you have to think about. Number one, the sellers are never giving you their equity. They are trading their equity for something else. It's similar, I'm trading dollars to this gas station, I was willing to give them an extra five or $10 in exchange for the convenience of me not having to schlep all over town. The same way that your sellers are, they're trading their money 
are in equity for the convenience of them not having to deal with the problem that they have at hand. Number two is you never want to impose onto the property owners your own mindset about what they what what you think they should take or wouldn't take etc i was on the call with one of our uh, coaching clients and uh you know they were hesitant about making an offer uh to a, a property owner they were asking uh twenty thousand dollars properties worth you know not, not, it wasn't worth that much it was a really kind of dingy property maybe right might be worth 40 grand and i said to them i said you know you're gonna have to tell them that typically would pay five thousand dollars for this type of property but maybe you know you could do seven seventy five hundred but that's about it and they were hesitant because they were thinking, well, there's like four siblings and they want to split the money. And that's why they wanted the 20K because they wanted 5K for each one. And in the end, you start thinking that way. Oh, why would they would not take that? And then all of a sudden you talk yourself out of a deal and you do that all the time. And people do that all the time. Don't do that. Price is only an issue of the absence of value. Put yourself in their shoes. What's the pain? There's two motivating factors, right? In any situation, the pain and greed. Pain and greed. If we have a seller that is greedy, that wants to get as much money as they can for the property, we can't help them. We need people that are in pain, have this little thorn in their finger and they want to remove it. Price is only an issue in the absence of value. If you're interested in getting a ton of motivated sellers coming to you through online marketing, which means that then they're warm prospects raising their hands and saying, please reach out to me. I'm interested in speaking uh, to you about my property. Check out this video here or there. I don't know where uh, it'll appear. It's my step-by-step -step on how we use Facebook ads in order to generate motivated seller leads. Check it out.